Peggy 12. Trading by nature tends to be slowish and we want to make the game fun and so we, we thought about a solution for that and our solution is to split trading into two different types of gameplay. Um, there is one which we call item trading which will be very familiar to, to you if you played the games in the past. You dock at a station and you buy things, you, you dock at another station, you sell things. Uh, this, is, this is really how you expect trading to work. Just now, when you compare it with the older games, you do this on platforms. So instead of dealing with menus, you now talk to people and buy stuff from them. We have uh, all kinds of traders on platforms and they sell stuff. You have items that you collect in, in space, uh, rare items that you find in containers, stuff that you steal from stations, stuff that you steal from ships. All of that is possible. That's, that's in general what we call item trading. And um, as the name indicates, this is really inventory trading. So you, instead of uh, transporting this with other ships, items are usually with you. They are on your ship. But the real trading is about large capacities using large ships, using tra transporter ships. That is now a completely separated gameplay element. This real trading that happens now with trade offers. Can, you can see the trade offers here. They are usually at the outside of stations because they need space. We are talking about large quantity of goods here. This real trading that's usually about the actual supply of factories and space cities with goods. So we require large ships for it and we require a lot of smaller ships to do the loading and unloading. So as you can hear in that, this really takes time if we want to represent it in the game realistically. You can see the large capital ship docking, you can see the drones starting to load and unload your goods to the ship. All of this is visualized realistically, but you as a player, you don't suffer from this speed because you just order other ships to do it. That's, that's really the trick. When you fly around a station, you see interesting trade offers, you are just collecting them. You, you can see me doing this here and I'm collecting them into my trade computer. Here on this menu, you can now see where they are listed. This is basically two menus. Uh, we group them by selling offers and buying offers. So I, on the one menu, you see what stations you have visited are currently selling goods. And on the other menu, you can see which products are currently being bought by stations. So by comparing this, you can find interesting matches and you can see for every product, where did you see it the cheapest so far? Then you order other ships to execute your trade orders. So here you can see the quantities, here you see the price that a station pays or that you have to pay to a station. And you can see at the top of this menu all of your ships. So you usually if you want to now give a trade order, you would select a ship that matches the products that you want. So for example, some one freighter, like in this example, can only transport energy because it's a specialized energy transporter, while another one is a more generic transporter with capacities for all types of products. You select which of the ships in your squad should execute this order. Then you select the matching products. You can now only select that fit with this ship. Then you confirm the order at the bottom of the menu. You see the actual transaction order. You can now change the quantity and by confirming it, you will now get a reply from the captain of the ship that he is now on his way to execute this order. The trick here is this is just a queue. You can, you can now add multiple of those orders to a single ship and it will execute these orders one by one. So while you fly around collecting orders, selecting the best ones for making money, your ships execute this with some delay afterwards. So it could be actually like a 10 to, to, to 20 minutes delay between you giving the order and the ship actually executing it. But that doesn't matter for you. If you like, you can watch the ship doing what you commanded it to do. But if you are more interested in playing the game in other areas, you may just do something else in between and you can already look for a place where you want to sell these products and give the sell order for the same products. Now a trader always wants to make the maximum amount of money and for that he wants to buy products as cheap as possible and sell them as expensive as possible. 
in the past uh, of the X Games, that always meant you, you are looking for the factory that has a very high amount of its products and then you can be sure that it's going to sell it very cheap and you are looking for another factory that buys these products as resources and currently is as empty as possible. The empty resources means they are willing to pay a higher price. While this is still true, there are now also lots of other explanations why a factory may be willing to pay more or is willing to sell for cheaper. But there's lots of little stories behind that. For example, there may be a technical problem with a cooling aggregate of a factory and because you know of that, you can predict that the prices are going down or are going up. And um, this information is crucial. And the way we are representing this to players is by discounts. Discounts are unlocked everywhere in the game. Just by flying over a station and getting information about the station, you may unlock a discount. This happens all the time. It can happen if you talk to a person and if you are successful and the guy likes you, he may give you a discount. That The story behind that could be that he has a cousin in, in the sales and he's just giving you some special price. The X games are played by very different folks. We, we know that the people who buy our games are, well, as different as people can be. There are some people who play our games entirely for the action part. They want to blow stuff up and we give them that. Um, and there are the, well, the opposite people who, who are really, really interested in the economy of our game and play our game because it provides them this realistic economy. And what we tried to achieve is not just to make both of those extremes and everybody in between happy, but to actually use the economy and that, that realistic universe also to make the game more interesting in all the other aspects. It's incredible how much more fun a fight can get if you know that it's all about that real economy underneath because all of the ships that are flying around there the NPC ships are also all part of that economy and it's not just you who is trading a couple of goods and making a little bit of money but by shooting down ships you are influencing the economy you are driving prices so even the the person who is just interested in playing missions and fighting will still be a part of that economy and will still feel a much deeper gameplay than in a game that takes its motivation entirely from scripted missions and the scripted universe. Okay, now I want to quickly show you how mining works, because mining is at the bottom of the economy. As you know, we have natural resources in our universe. Many of those come from asteroid fields, but not all of them. We also have nebulas, which can be harvested for things like plasma. But for all of that harvesting, you need collector ships. The way you command those ships is you simply put them in your own command group. Once, once I did that, this ship will follow me around. If I am now in an asteroid field, like this one here, I can turn on a mode and tag asteroids. If I tag an asteroid, you can see how the collector ship launches drones, pick them up and drag them over to the capital ship. So without any complicated user interface, I can very quickly and easily tell the ship exactly what I want it to do. Of course you don't have to do that. If you just want the ship to automatically mine an entire field, you can also do that with an order. You just open a communication like this, you tell it what you want it to do, you tell it mine this asteroid field and then you can go away and maybe this ship will mine for half an hour and then afterwards call you and tell you that it is now completely full and you can tell it where to sell the, um, the resources it just mined. But of course we reward you for this manual mining because by selecting the best rocks to pick up you can greatly increase the outcome and it can fit a lot more actual resources in its storage because it doesn't have so much useless rock to get the rocks that you can pick up with your collector ship, you sometimes have to cut asteroids into smaller pieces. Large asteroids need to be cut with mining lasers or missiles and um, you can use your own mining laser like I'm doing here and cut it directly with your own ship or you can just tell one of your capital ships to do that. And again, you don't have to open a menu for that, you just tag the asteroid and the capital ship will try to fly as close as possible and use its mining laser to cut this asteroid into smaller pieces. And that is, again, much more efficient than let it do it automatically because you can select those rocks which look most lucrative.
Welcome aboard. Board computer ready to receive new command. 